feet. Missing the carols at Lobethal. Has anyone got to a carol service this year? It's been a bit light on. Some of us went to Birdwood the other night, which was nice. Anyone else been to one? Here, yes, 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 yes. And I'm glad that we were down at Semaphore last night. We had a great time with the grandchildren. We took them on their first ride. <laughs> and it went slowly up, 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 up. And then went down, down, down. And little Connie, three-year-old, says, Oh, it was great. We went up really high. <laughs> It was very exciting, though they had lots of fun. Hey, um, early in the week, something special happened in the evening sky. Who went out and saw it? Theresa did? Paula? Could you all find it? Bit cloudy over at Charleston. Charleston's like that. <laughs> Down in the valley. We're up on the hill at our place. You should come to our place, Peter. We had a reasonable view, yeah. And, but they weren't quite joined up, but there was two bright stars which were Saturn and Jupiter. Now somebody told me if you went on the Astronomy SA website, you could see all the rings of Jupiter and everything. One of the guys at work looked at that and it was pretty amazing. But there's the star in the sky. It reminds us of the next song talks about what's amazing about Christmas. God turned the night sky on its head to bring not Jews, but foreigners, in to see the king. And he sends a star, a most amazing star. Far more amazing than that one. They could predict when that one was going to be there, and they could predict when it will come again next. But the star that they saw came, and it rose in the east, and they followed it, and it stops in one spot, and then it goes again, and goes across, and stops over the place where the young child was. An amazing star. A star sent by God Almighty. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Saviour's birth. So, what happens? So, led by verse 2, so led by light of a star sweetly gleaming, here came the wise men from Orient land. Yeah, we're not told how many wise men there were, but we think three because there were three gifts. Led by the light of faith serenely beaming, what do we do? With glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. By his cradle we stand this morning. Let's stand up and we'll sing it together. Oh, holy night. We should black the windows out. Can yeah. you know, <laughs> now, I've been talking about a couple of things that I've thought of. What do you reckon? You can think of some more amazing things about Christmas. next song we're going to sing is O Come All You Faithful and the verse 2 of it I'll, re I'll read it to you see if you remember it true God of true God light of light eternal lo he abhors not the virgin's womb son of the father begotten not created O come let us adore him now what was all that about you probably miss it as you go through it because we Talking about abhorring not the virgin's womb? Does it, what's that about? True God of true God. Well, we know that's what that's about. That's talking about Jesus, who being in the very form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Being in the form of servant, he became obedient even unto death. I hope I've quoted that right for you. It's from Philippians chapter 2. Actually, we'll flick it up. You can put it up, Megan, for a Thanks. Next little Bible reading is there. Made himself of nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness in that translation. True God of true God, light of light eternal. This is God, the almighty majestic God whom we bow before in fact we'll be on our faces before him one day but he says here that he doesn't disdain humanity and he's come to be with man and he's come to a lowly virgin and he's come and here he is within her womb now, this is an amazing thing that Christ the very son of God son of the father begotten not created should come to be with man to live amongst men. Pleased as another Christmas carol says, pleased as God with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel.
made himself of nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. God becomes one of us. Amazing story of Christmas. Let's stand up, we'll sing it together. Oh, come, all you faithful. Find the beautiful words that's in them as the story of Christmas is related through the songs. He emptied himself, taking the form of servant and being in the likeness of me. What a sight. Peter, would you like to come and speak? Thank you. Twelve months ago we were uh, dodging fires and then the fire season finished and for the remainder of the year it seems we've been dodging COVID. Um, 2020 will probably be remembered as the COVID year and I guess we've been lucky not to catch it. Now, I'm glad you picked it up Dorothy because that was my very next comment in terms of for those who were here last night, how do you respond to what I just said? We're blessed. In the scheme of God, there's no such thing as luck. God has been good to us. Sure, we've been well led, I, think, I believe. Um, but still, God has been good to us. Luck has nothing to do with the work of God. Look at the birth of Jesus. When we leave God out of the picture, it's lucky that Caesar Augustus ordered a census when he did. It's lucky that Joseph was of the family of David, which meant that Bethlehem was his hometown. It's lucky that Mary was of the family of David, and it's lucky she went with Joseph. It's lucky that the prophets prophesied the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. But all of this is not luck. It was the plan of God being worked out perfectly. There is no such thing as luck in the plans of God. Caesar Augustus, Joseph, Mary, the timing of it all were instruments of God. The Old Testament hope that was fulfilled in the birth of Jesus was planned for for over a thousand years. In fact, Really, we could go back to Genesis 3 to see the beginning. If we look closely at the birth of Jesus, we see God's miracles everywhere. They may look like lucky circumstances to human beings, but they are the miracles of God. The miracle of the birth of Jesus is the planned work of God. But we need to remember that miracles don't just happen way back then when Jesus was born as we read the Gospels we read the miracles that Jesus did when he went around teaching people feeding people, healing people the blind see the deaf hear, he cast out demons he got up the nose of the religious leaders of the, of the day but then when we read the book of Acts we continue to read the miracles of God in and through what the, the apostles or the Christians at, the, at that day did. A crippled man went walking and leaping and praising God. And today God continues to perform miracles. Your life and my life is a miracle of God. Jesus came in miraculous God-ordained circumstances in order to perform a miracle in your life. That miracle is first seen when you become a Christian and as you continue to live with your life with God, God continues to do miracles in you but also through you. Now I'm positive that if I gave you time to think, everyone here could, could come up with a miracle that God has performed in your life. By miracles, I just don't just mean the big miracles that you then write a book about and you sell a million copies and you make a million dollars. I'm talking about what we would call small miracles, which are just as miraculous as, as the big ones, 
because they're done by God. It's not the size of a miracle that makes it big or small in that sense. Someone being healed of cancer or a, walk, a cripple walking again is a miracle. And there are times when God still does that sort of miracle today. But too often I think we miss out on such blessing we miss out on what we call the so-called small miracles. The devil we know can counterfeit the big stuff, but he cannot counterfeit the miracle of God's love that flows in and then through our lives. A big miracle in, in my life was when I didn't die, when I fell off a cliff or when I ran headlong in the front of a car. A small miracle has been the many times that God has provided for us going through theological college, through small gifts of appreciation, or even the, the hard times when God has to teach me something about myself and my relationship with him and how that works out in this world. We have all experienced the miraculous intervention of God in our lives. The biggest miracle that I see in people's lives is when they stop thinking about themselves and start thinking about other people. The greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. And the second is yeah, say it out loud to Dorothy so everyone can hear love your neighbour as yourself. The type of love that Jesus is talking about when he said this is the type of love that can only come from God to us and ultimately in an ultimate sense we see that in the not just the birth of Jesus but the fact that he stayed here and then he died and rose again and he's coming again that's the greatest miracle the miracle that we see at Christmas in the birth of Jesus is the miracle of the love of God to us and then in and through us in the birth of Jesus we see love in action. We see the love of God that he has for us and for all of the world, all of his creation. God's miracles continue when, we, when we, the, we, we then show God's love to the world around us. One of the examples, of course, has come up this morning is through Baptist Care and through their housing project in seeking to provide housing for those or more housing for those who, who don't have any in it. That is an act of, of love. And we can contribute to that through our offerings. One of the traditions of Christmas is that we give gifts. Why do we give gifts? Because God the Father gave the greatest gift of his son Jesus. Giving gifts is supposed to remind us of Jesus. God sent Jesus because he loves us. The gift of Jesus is a gift of love from God to you and me. The gifts that we give to one another are meant to remind us or show others of the, the gift of God's love to us in Jesus. So as you give gifts this Christmas, as you give them, may you be fully aware of God's giving of his love to us in Jesus. As you receive a gift, may that remind you of the love that you have received from God that we can then give and show to all those around us. Have a blessed Christmas. Not a happy Christmas. Have a blessed Christmas this year. Thank you, Colin. impossible for us not to have a blessed Christmas really <laughs> it's already happened <laughs> it's already happened we have Christ what child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping who is this child we've talked about him so much now this morning this this is Christ the King haste haste what to bring him praise and that's our response this morning is to give praise to the Christ the Son of God Let's stand up.